Well, good morning and welcome to Our Stories. Our guest today is Chris Foster. Uh, Chris, as most of you know, was a, a teacher here in Decatur. Um, and certainly, I think you'll find that because of her family background, uh, that going into teaching was no big surprise uh, and something that uh, probably was part of her genetic makeup, perhaps, if there is such a thing. But uh, so, Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the, uh, you know, your family and your situation of being surrounded by education. Well, my mother was, grew up in a family of Presbyterian ministers. And uh, her grandfather was a minister. He was a German immigrant and eventually was a pastor 27 years in New York City and then taught at the Omaha School of Religion Mm -hmm. uh, for a number of years. Her father and both his brothers were Presbyterian ministers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> both her brothers, um, two of her first cousins, all became Pres Presbyterian ministers. And when my parents were married, my dad said they were well and truly married. There were seven ministers <laughs> from the family present. Yeah. We didn't really have a lot of teachers, mm -hmm. but uh, um, in my generation, a lot of people yeah. went into teaching instead, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, but do you develop an interest in math? I always liked math. That yeah. was my favorite subject in school. Um, I liked solving puzzles, especially logic puzzles. I still yeah. like to do that sort of thing. I especially enjoy problem solving, so that's why I was interested in math. Was there somebody in particular who encouraged you to go into it? Well, my high school uh, math teacher, Bill Brown, uh, suggested I pursue math. I considered uh, going into engineering, but I grew up in the 1950s and 60s, and the primary thing for women to do were going to either teaching or nursing. And um, it uh, turned out to be a good choice. I did go to the University of Illinois and I took uh, engineering chemistry and engineering physics. Uh, in one physics class, I was one of three women in a lecture of over 300. Uh, engineering wasn't very practical. Today, collaboration is a big deal in education, working together. Well, back in the olden days, women had hours, which meant they had to be in the dorm by 10.30. Uh, later on the weekend, but you couldn't get together to study with people in the evening. Yeah. Telephones were limited, so women in science were basically working on their own. So teaching turned out to be a much friendlier place for me. You said your mom was a strong influence in your life. Uh, what, what kinds of things do you think she, you know, did or said or whatever that had an impact on you? Well, I would, this has been an interesting question to think about, I, mm -hmm. something I'd never given much thought to. I would think the main influences in my life came from the way in which I was raised. Now, mother was at home, dad was at work, so I think of her more often yeah. than my dad. Uh, and as we said, she grew up in a family of uh, Presbyterian ministers. She also had a degree in social work, so all of that yeah. <laughs> sort of helped define who she was. Um, I would say she taught empathy by sharing her beliefs through the way she lived. Um, I'm the oldest of five children, and I wrote this down, so I'll, I'll read this part. <laughs> we were expected to make good choices, be respectful, consider other people's feelings, be kind, be truthful, and take responsibility for our actions. I'd say we absorbed values rather than being taught them, we didn't have a lot of rules, but we certainly, there were expectations. We had expectations. Mm -hmm. Of course, if necessary, we might have been told, oh, well, we don't do that in our family. Right. So there were things right. like that. I don't remember much in the way of consequences or punishments, but our parents were very proud of us. Uh, they supported us. We were encouraged rather than pushed into doing things. and. Mm -hmm. As adults, we kids all said the worst thing we could have done was disappoint our parents. Right. It wasn't guilt or pressure. Um, they were just so positively supportive. Right. And that's one of the things that has really carried through for me. Yeah. Um, they didn't compare us 
they were proud of all of us. Mm -hmm. Just it was a neat family to grow up in. Yeah, but I do think that that part about uh, understanding what was expected of you and and uh, and you know really kind of holding on to you know you don't want to disappoint them you know this is what they expect of me right. and I don't want to not measure up to that you know right. was was strong yes when I was in high school uh, I didn't have a curfew uh, I could come in I was came in earlier than all my friends who were trying to stay out to the last <laughs> possible moment. Um, I don't really ever remember feeling what I would call peer pressure to do something that would have been inappropriate. Um, I did not have a need to prove that I could do things uh, because the choices were mine. Mm -hmm. Now I could have gotten in trouble I suppose but I, some kids, I have a story I thought I would share. This is again with from my mother. Yeah. I learned long after I was a kid. Um, there was a man here in Decatur who was bemoaning the fact that he was having so much trouble with his teenagers. And he said, but of course, you know that teens are going to rebel. And my mom looked at him and said, well, if that's what you expect them to do, they will. Sort of end of discussion. <laughs> right. Yeah. In terms of, of what, how you found yourself handling things with students, um, or, you know, parents, whatever, and, you know, in, in teaching, um, were there things that, you know, you've alluded to here about your, how you were brought up and what you developed that you know were kind of the things that you relied on in working with, with students and, and with parents? Yes, um, I would say that I ran my classrooms essentially the way I was raised. I had expectations. I did not have a laundry list of rules. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, well, I taught high school math. And so I taught everything from general math through calculus. I did a lot of geometry and pre-cal. So mm -hmm. it's a little different than adding. And every semester, we might have different students, even in a continuing class. So every semester, I would go through what I called my expectations. Well, it's the normal, you know, stay in your seat, raise your hand. Sure. But I also said, this is the one I absolutely have for this room. I will respect you and be polite to you. I expect you to respect me and be polite to me and to each other. If somebody says something funny, we'll laugh. But no one in here will make fun of either someone's question or their answers. It worked. Good, good rules to live by. Really? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, thanks so much for sharing that. It was Thank you. Mm -hmm.